Hey all, I'm Eric from Stockholm, Sweden. I'm the head of pipeline at Goodbye Kansas Studios. I'll be talking a little bit about who we are and what we do and our history with using V-Ray over the last couple of years. After that, I will hand it over to Don, my colleague, that will show V-Ray and Solaris, the V-Ray Hydra delegate and other neat things about using USD together with V-Ray. As a quick company introduction, we have offices globally. Most of our employees are in Stockholm and London. We have grown pretty quickly over the last couple of years and now we are over 240 employees worldwide. In 2019 we had four different offices in the Stockholm Uppsala region and then we got the possibility to have a building built after our own specification. Uh, this new office was built in Hammarby Sjösta in Stockholm and it made it possible for us to all be under the same roof. As it was a new building, it also gave us the possibility to design the interior, both to our liking and to our specification. But unfortunately, after a couple of months, we had to work from home because of the pandemic, but we hope to be able to return soon. At Goodbye Kansas, we do performance capture. We have an in-house stage. We do scanning. We have both a face and body scanner available in the office. We also deliver face rigs for a lot of external game clients. And in addition to that, we also do a lot of normal VFX, of course, for cinematics, film, TV, and advertising. We started using V-Ray around 2011. Then we were using Maya. Uh, that was our go-to toolset for lighting and look dev up until 2019. Then we started looking into USD and we also started eyeing Houdini Solaris, but it was not production ready yet. Uh, because we already had a pretty established pipeline in Houdini for our FX work, we decided to start off by switching to a normal lighting workflow in SOPS in Houdini. Uh, we have been working with Chaos Group since then on bug reports for Vira for Houdini and the last couple of months we have also been uh, testing out V-Ray for Solaris pretty intensely. Uh, making sure that the needed features are there and helping out finding bugs. One of our main reasons for going towards USD is to be able to handle increased complexity, easier to sequence lighting and future-proofing ourselves to be able to extend into more applications. Thanks Eric for that good demonstration on what uh, we do here at Goodbye Kansas Studios. And uh, my name is Dan, uh, Dan Englison, and uh, I'm a pipeline technical director here at Goodbye Kansas Studios and I'm going to show you today uh, a little sneak peek on our USD pipeline uh, that we've built around Solaris and uh, the V-Ray Hydra delegate. So let's get to it. So you might wonder what USD is um, all about. Uh, so USD stands for Universal Scene Description and uh, was developed by Pixar Animation Studios and was open sourced in 2016. Uh, with USD, uh, we're able to describe both scenes and assets in the same file format. And these uh, scenes and assets are just USD files on disk that you put together and bundle together into an asset or a shot. So if we take, for instance, uh, a shot here uh, that we will go through, uh, we have a layout layer where we put in all our layout in and then we have a lighting layer where we can put in all our lights in and then combining those together into a shot makes up the shot so we have a layout with lighting and we can be able to render that shot uh, and uh, by being able to describe both uh, the scenes and assets in the same file format this makes it into a very powerful uh, pipeline tool to actually use to just uh, ship among different DCCs. Uh, so USD is DCC agnostic. So you can uh, say, do some modeling in Maya, push that into USD, some shading in Houdini, push that into USD, and then take that asset or scene and render it in say Blender or Unreal, because everything is self-contained within the USD file. And what better way to show it than to actually just show it. So let me show you. Uh, so this is uh, the USD viewer that ships with USD. Uh, we have taken our uh, demo scene for, for this uh, uh, demo purpose. And uh, yeah, just viewing it in the USD uh, viewer. So everything here is described within the USD file. We have geometry, we have shading, we have the render settings. And you can see the hierarchical view of how it's structured. 
and it's rendered with the V-Ray Hydro Delegate. So now we can just tumble around in the scene here. Uh, we're not using Houdini or Maya to display this or resolve any textures or anything. This is pure USD. And it's not even just a static scene. So we can, for instance, take the car asset, the station wagon, and invis it. So you get some live feedback going on. And you can play around in the scene, maybe make some notes, and then yeah, push it forward. So it's a really powerful tool to just up, open up, see the scene, see an asset, um, and stuff like that. And here we switch over to the camera. So you can see the camera uh, and how the shot actually plays out without having to use any other DCC than USD here. Uh, so that was a quick introduction of USD. So let's go ahead and see how we set up this scene. So uh, we're using Solaris, Houdini Solaris, and uh, we have built uh, a node, an in-house node called USD Manager that manage all our uh, departments, pretty much. So we have layout, we have lighting, we have effects, and all the different departments that uses the same workflow, pretty much. And this is built around uh, the LOP context, or Solaris in this case. And we're using the V-Ray Hydra delegate to do the actual uh, rendering and the final frame rendering within it. So let's dive in and see how it looks. So this is the USD manager that I just talked about. Uh, we can just drop that down uh, into the scene and then dive in. And at the top here, we're actually just referencing in the, the scene. Uh, and uh, we're talking to F-Track at this point. Uh, so we uh, talk to F-Track and say, give me the stable um, scene version or the latest one. And then it pulls it in. And at the bottom here, or in this view here, you can uh, pull in data from, say, uh, the subcontext outside of Solaris. So here's a terrain that's generated through a height field. It's a very basic one uh, that is live and uh, updating in the scene. Uh, but we don't work with live geometry. So what we do is that we actually publish this as a shot asset uh, onto F-Track. And then we reference that file in. So this is some nodes that we've written to actually send it off uh, to F-Track and then pull it back in with a reference. So now we can version it and uh, work on it in on in a versioned way. Then we can go down and assign some materials, uh, just for demo purposes. So this is a V-Ray material builder. Uh, we slap on any V-Ray material that we want to uh, use. And you can actually just copy paste your old materials into uh, the V-Ray material builder and it just works. Moving further down, uh, here's an instancer. So we're instancing some trees. And it's really cool in the Solaris context. Uh, it's very easy to just instance stuff. So here we're pulling in uh, a tree asset. And this tree asset is just pointing to an asset on F-Track. It shows the, in this case, we pull in the latest one. Uh, we're using a node here called Explore Variants to actually just expand all the different modeling variants that we have. So we have four different uh, four different trees that we want to instance out. And to instance, you have to create these uh, prototypes uh, to instance them out. And with this explore variants, you can actually just see all the variants that you have in a very simple way. So here's the four different uh, palm trees that we have that we want to instance out. And you can just quickly have a look like, yeah, this looks good. Um, and then we put them into a collection. So this is a tree, or we name this a tree collection. And we can, in the instancer, go down and say, yeah, for this collection, instance it out uh, randomly there. And um, in this case, we go back to the SOP, um, a SOP node that is an external one. So we're actually jumping out from Solaris and doing the normal way of just scattering and painting out. And then we can jump back into Solaris and just pull that in. You can do it just within the instancer as well, uh, as we did with the grass and um, and the tropical bushes as well. So let's just enable the grass to see how that looks. And this is really cool. Like we're live updating the V-Ray Hydra delegate now. So it's very nice to get this feedback. It's like, yeah, let's pull this in, pull that in, and you see it instantly.
All right, so now we have instanced a bunch of stuff. So let's create a little shot here. So these are sort of the hero assets uh, for this demo purpose that I put down. So yeah, we have some rocks with trees, a car, and let's just merge that in and see how those looks. And yeah, you place them out in the scene with a transform there. You can use a stage manager to do this as well, but in this uh, demo, we ended up doing it th this way here. It's pretty neat. You can w work in any way, however you want there. And lastly, let's put down a camera to actually create a scene that looks interesting in some, some way. So there we go. So there is the camera that we saw uh, in the USD viewer. Now we're ready with the layout. We can just push that into our layout layer that we saw on the second slide there. And now we're done. We're done with the layout. So now we can move over to uh, how we did, did the lighting. So here's the same thing. We have the USD manager. Uh, everyone's familiar with how it looks. And we pull in the scene, uh, but instead of having all the layout uh, nodes in here, we just have a simple lighting setup with two lights. So a dome light and a distant light. And then uh, side effects uh, has a really neat uh, little node called a light mixer, which enables you to see all the lights and do edits to them uh, in just one node. So here you can change the exposure or intensity of the light or the color and just play around with it and disable the lights and check out how, how things look. Um, but before we do that, let's uh, uh, not start mixing too much with the lights because I want to show the snapshot tool that SideFX has as well. So let's open that one up. And this snapshot tool is really cool. It's just not taking just a snapshot of the image. It's actually taking a snapshot of the uh, uh, node network as well, uh, which makes it really powerful. So you can actually say revert network to this snapshot and go back to that current state. So now you can start playing around with different lighting setups and different settings. And yeah, in this case, let's turn on the, uh, the sun a little bit more to get a little bit more of a sunny feel in the scene and create a snapshot out of that. Just waiting a little bit to get some uh, some preview image that is not too noisy. There we go. So now we have two snapshots uh, and we have the sunny um, snapshot working right now, but let's revert back to a more cloudy, uh, cloudy render. And there you go. So now you see the settings changed, the lighting changed and uh, yeah, now your supervisor can just walk by and say, yeah, which one do you like or prefer? And you just switch between these and then set it to the one that, that was of the liking. Here we have created a husk node um, that ships renders to the farm and using the husk render delegate. Um, and uh, lastly, once you're happy, you can just publish your lighting uh, setup into a USD layer for that. Um, for that shot. And now we have lighting and we have um, layout and we're ready to start rendering this shot to, to put out for review. So that was a very quick introduction on how, yeah, how layout and lighting works in Solaris with the V-Ray Hydra Delegate. Um, it was a very quick intro, uh, but I hope you found it interesting and we're happy to talk more about it at any point. Uh, so thank you very much for listening.